Okay, so let's do the deed. Let's expand out this portion of the cladogram and look just at the plants. Now, what I want you to remember, I want you to keep the big picture in mind because I actually am going to expect you to be able to, um, to bring, to put the whole thing together at one time, which is totally doable and kind of an important activity, but I can't do it here because I can't write small enough to where you can read it. I mean, you can't read my writing anyway. So, um, but we're going to expand out the plants and hopefully you'll see what I'm, what I'm talking about. So let's start by remembering that um, the sister group to our land plants are algae. So all I'm doing is taking the clade that we already identified, and now we're going to look at, okay, everything beyond here is a land plant. It's a multicellular organism. You know what? Let's just throw it in here that has um, chloroplasts. and lives on land, although some of them moved out away from land. They're like, this land stuff's garbage. I'm a land plant, but I don't live in the water. All right, so land plants. The first group of land plants is a group called mosses, and the fact is that they're also called bryophytes. Bryophytes. And you probably should be familiar with bryophyte. Um, if you're doing like a short answer question on an exam, mosses is perfectly acceptable. But if I ask you about bryophytes, you probably should know that bryophytes are mosses. And I want to show you a picture of a moss. Hmm. Rather, mosses are pretty familiar. Um, they are often confused with lichens. Lichens are not land plants, and we're actually going to look at those when we talk about fungi because they are fungi, um, algae, like families. <laughs> but mosses are, are a familiar group of organisms. Mosses, the, the mosses, the ancestor that gave rise to the mosses also gave rise to a group of plants that had a characteristic that mosses don't have, and that's, um, uh, water vasculature. Vasculature. So tell me, what does vasculature make you think of? Blood? Well, it's exactly the same thing. I think of um, water tubes, like blood vessels. Plants got water tubes. And if you think about it, mosses don't have water tubes but everybody beyond does, what kind of environments do you see mosses living in? Humboldt County? Yes, <laughs> because it's very wet. They don't need water tubes. They can just absorb their water from the environment. If you think about, like, cacti, cactuses live in deserts where they're not going to be absorbing any water. They're going to be losing water to the environment. So if you can keep your water in a tube inside your body and move it around, it's less likely to evaporate. So this is super handy adaptation for moving farther into land and away from water. And the first group of um, critters that has this water vasculature trait are ferns. And these guys are also called pteridophytes. Pteridophytes. Nice. So ferns, let's take a look at a fern. Familiar. This is actually a baby fern. Plant life cycles, I had to skip it because we don't have enough time to talk about it, but it's so cool. This is like a haploid, it's like a sperm. It's like a grown-up sperm that is walking around and it gives rise to this other plant. It's super cool. I wish we could talk about it, but we can't. So pteridophytes, they've got water vasculature tubes. The next thing that plants get, and this is really cool, they get seeds. And the first group that branches off from the seeded plants are conifers. These guys are also called gymnosperms. 
Again, conifer is familiar. It's a Christmas tree. And gymnosperms are the name of the fancy name, whatever, the science name of conifers. So take a look at our gymnosperm. Um, they do have seeds. Seeds are an incredible adaptation that plants came up with. Basically, they take their babies, their sperm and their eggs and whatever, and they package them with a lunch. If you think about what a seed actually is, like we talked about our corn babies when we did the uh, genetic stuff, and they really are like they're baby plants. They're in there. The baby plant is in there, but mom and dad like packed them a lunch. So the seed is all this food that really is there just for the baby to survive. So it's a pretty cool adaptation. It lets the mom and the dad not be together. It lets the baby go off and, like, have its own life because it has a lunch that got packed for it. So seed is an awesome thing, and everybody beyond here has seeds. Um, and the last group, who are we missing? Aw, I'll give you a hint. They have flowers. They're flowering plants. Oops, not flowering plants. Flowering plants. And flowering plants are called angiosperms. Angiosperms, um, holy diversity. We could truly spend an entire lecture just on angiosperms. They're super interesting. They have all these amazing reproductive adaptations with their flowers, and they've done all this kind of really cool um, co-evolution with animals that pollinate them. So I could spend lots of time on the angiosperms, but I can't because, look, we just did our land plants. You're done. This whole thing, you could take this whole bit right here. Am I right? Am I right? That whole bit and there it is right there. We just expanded that one place. So challenge yourself. Go in and make, your, make this cladogram again. Rewrite this cladogram and include all the four land plants that we are um, going to be accountable for. All right, fungi. We're not fleshing anything out here, but let's talk about those amazing things.